12-year-old six-inch high boy who finds himself on an adventure in the woods with a group of equally tiny people. This chapter follows him as he heads off to fight a stone golem with Sapphire the Princess. And this is by Gail Russell, who's sitting over there. <laughs> so this is chapter eight of Jasper and the Tipkins, and it's called The Stone Golem. They made their way swiftly through the forest, Sapphire one step ahead. Leading the way to the quarry, Jasper kept pace, feeling as though the Tipkin potion had begun to seep through his armour and into his skin and bones, making him stronger too. He was barely out of breath as he reached along at Sapphire's side, leaping over fallen branches and ducking through brook bushes without making a sound. The pair kept quiet, communicating with each other through looks and hand gestures, focused on the task that lay ahead of them and too lost in their own thoughts to vocalise any of them. Finally, as the light shining through the trees began to glow orange and the sun dropped in the sky, Sapphire stopped, holding her hand up to Jasper to indicate that he should stop too. They had arrived. Jasper stepped forward so he was directly beside her and looked around for the golem. In front of them was a steep drop, the ground changing suddenly from mossy forest floor to dry rock and rubble that slid and shifted with every gust of wind. Pebbles rolled down the steep surface in many avalanches every few seconds, landing with a clatter far below in a large flat clearing. Jasper scanned the area, bracing himself for the sight of the golem, but all he saw down below were more rocks. Those ones were much larger than those from the snow and were piled together in bundles dotted around the dusty floor, but they were still just rocks. He glanced at Sapphire questioningly and saw that her eyes were widened slightly. What was she scared of? Sorry, was she scared? He reached out and tapped her tightly on the shoulder, making her flinch. Where's the gun? He whispered as quietly as he could, though he couldn't see his enemy in front of him. He knew that the stone golem could be anywhere, and he didn't want to risk being here. Sapphire stared back at him with a strange expression on his face, then turned and pointed down to the pile of rocks. When the light fading as the, with the light fading as they drew, the, the day grew to an end, the clearing at the bottom of the quarry was falling into darkness. Long shadows cast by its steep walls shifted and began to creep up the sides of the rocks. Each pile began to quiver, a loud rumbling sound, echoing through the quarry and reaching the ears of Jasper and Sapphire high above them. Then, with the thunderous sound of boulders crashing together, one of the rocks, rock piles stood up. <gasps> Ready, Sapphire whispered so quietly Jasper barely caught her words. Was he ready? He'd known that this was coming, that he was coming here to do, but now that he'd actually made it, he wasn't sure he could do it. Suddenly, despite the typical the typical potion, his armour felt like it weighed a ton, and a trickle of sweat fell from his brow onto the dry ground below. I, I, I don't know, he stammered as he watched each pile of rocks below quiver and come to life. There were five of them pacing around the floor below him now, rumbling and grinding as they walked. He hadn't signed up for five stone golems, just the one, or just one. And even then, he wasn't sure he was even able to do that. Oh, yes, you can, whispered Sapphire back at him forcefully, her eyes glinting with determination. You fought the dark night for us without even thinking about it and defeated him within minutes. You readied yourself for this battle with no fear, and I will not let you back out of it now. Suddenly, Sapphire reached out to Jasper, grabbed him by the back of the neck, and gave him an almighty shove, hurtling down, him down the side of the quarry wall and another rocky avalanche and towards the creatures below. If the creatures had seemed large from their high viewpoint, that was nothing to how they looked now as Jasper stood at their feet. He tilted his head so far back he felt his neck would break as he craned to take them in, and the de dread that had begun to creep up on him almost took hold of him completely as he struggled to work out how he, a six-inch boy, was going to defeat them armed with nothing but a dagger, which must seem like nothing more than a toothpick to these creatures. A clattering of rocks behind him drew him out of his thoughts, and Sapphire appeared at his side, her head, head held high and her chin jutting out defiantly. Okay, let's do this, she 
almost shouted and pushed past Jasper into the open field. Jasper wasn't ready. He, how could he ever be ready for something like this? And yet, he found that as Sapphire moved forward, his feet carried him alongside her and into the midst of the five giant rock men. His hand gripped the hilt of his dagger as he prepared to fight. And as the pair moved forward, the creatures began to stop in their tracks and turn towards them. Well, it's never, never, I suppose, Jasper breathed and started to pull the dagger from his belt. To his surprise, Sapphire grabbed his wrist, stopping him from unsheathing his blade. Her eyes were locked straight ahead in the direction they were walking and she nodded slightly to indicate that Jasper could, should do the same. He dragged his eyes away from Sapphire and the creatures surrounding them and forced himself to look dead ahead, blocking out the sight of the elemental creatures he was sure would crush them both at any second. Look, Sapphire whispered through her teeth, they are. Up ahead, on the opposite side of the quarry wall, was a roughly hewn cave Jasper hadn't noticed before. It was large, almost half the height of the wall, but hidden behind piles of the slate grey quarry rocks. It was only when facing it directly, as they were doing now, that it was really noticeable at all. If he squinted hard enough, Jasper could just make out a large shape moving inside the cave. He stepped closer, and as he closed the distance between himself and the quarry wall, his eyes finally found the outline of the object inside the cave. It was a rock golem, not unlike the ones that shuffled around the quarry floor, their rumbling surrounding Jasper, Jasper and Sapphire, so that the earth shook and it sounded like a thunderstorm around them. Not unlike them, but not quite the same either. For a start, this one was bigger. As they moved closer, it stood up its massive body filling the opening to the cave. Jasper had never felt so small. And in wall ahead, his eyes finally found the outline of the object inside the cave. It was a rock golem, not unlike the ones that shuffled around. That's my bad, my beating this again. <laughs> my printer, my printer failed. <laughs> my, my printer has failed. <laughs> So I'll skip that. Sorry. It's okay. Well, sorry folks, I'm just, well, what I'll do is I'll just finish off with a wee bit. Yeah. So I can't do this, he whispered vaguely in the direction of Sapphire. Yes, you can, Jasper. You have to. There's no going back now. And for a second time that night, she placed her hand on Jasper's back and gave him a mighty shot. I, Clint, I'm <laughs>